Hello everyone, welcome back to another chapter of this series, My Life an Open Book. The last chapter I did was on depression and the feedback so far has been positive. I literally just posted it yesterday so it's still very new but everything has been so positive so far so I just want to say thank you because it's been so scary stepping out on this journey and you know just because what it's been like to me is I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just stepping out on faith, doing what God has been putting on my heart to do for years, you know, for a long time. And just finally getting to that place where I'm like, okay, God, use me. I'm your vessel. Speak through me. What is it that your children need to hear? What is it that you want me to say? So this whole experience has been a journey for me and i just appreciate all the encouraging words you guys have been sending and the whole point of this like i said in the last video is you know to comfort and to heal you guys and to just let you know that i'm there with you i'm also experiencing similar things that some of you are experiencing and we move in life we keep moving we keep trusting god we keep stepping forward um and we're all in this together you know there's a better place that we're going to after this an amazing place with no fears no no hardship no negativity literally basking in bliss for eternity but while we're here on earth we have to endure some things and you know my whole point with all of this is just to give you guys some encouraging words that make you feel like I can get through this day you know this next chapter is going to be on fear um, I feel like this is an important thing to talk about because fear is that one emotion that is going to keep you from doing a lot of incredible things in your life it's going to hold you back from the purpose for your life from fearing God from trusting God from taking the next steps that are supposed to elevate you in your life so I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of the things that I faced with fear along this journey to be becoming a physician um, to start things out when I was leaving high school I knew that I wanted to be a physician I always knew I wanted to be a doctor from and I said this before in past videos that I knew I wanted to be a doctor when I was nine years old I remember the very day that God gave me that you know awakening and I was like oh yeah I am going to be a physician so i've always known that i was going to be in medicine or at least something medical related that i was going to be doing something in this field but the older you get the more you talk to people you start realizing that medicine is hard <laughs> like a lot of things in life are hard but medicine has been known to be very grueling for so many years everybody knows you know the horror stories it's such a huge sacrifice you have no time for yourself blah 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 the fail rate is high there's a lot of negativity surrounding like the journey to becoming a doctor and that was scary for me i was afraid of you know the years that i would have to give away to have this dream i was afraid of failing because you know like i said before my type a perfectionist personality i didn't want to have to be in a situation where i'm constantly battling between can i do this am i gonna fail you know i was afraid i was afraid of medicine i think i started to become more afraid of medicine when i was in my last year of high school because at the time that's when one of my teachers my biology teacher was saying you know you should go to st george's we have we've had other students from here who go to sgu right out of um, high school and they do so well you should go you've always wanted to be a doctor why don't you take the leap and go at the time i was still a swimmer um and i still had hopes of going to the olympics to be very very honest during my last year of high school i kind of knew i was done with swimming i just didn't have that same love that i used to have for it when i was much younger maybe like around 15 14 i was more so wanting to go to the olympics still feeling like 
swimming was gonna be a huge part of my life for a very long time but then during that last year or two years of high school I could already see myself envisioning a different life for myself but because I was afraid of the journey um, in medicine and I was afraid of what the outcome would be I was afraid of you know can I afford what it costs to become a doctor not financially but really just in terms of the sacrifice the hard work do i have what it takes that fear is what held me back and i wasn't sure i felt mature enough or ready enough and that's really what pushed me to go to school in california instead of just going straight to sgu so i ended up applying to schools in california i got into cal state long beach and i'm not gonna go through this whole part because i talked about it in my journey to md video that's on my instagram already but i had gone to california initially and i was there actually for three semesters only before i transitioned to go to sgu so the first two semesters i already knew that okay girl you're wasting your time at this point you know that you want medicine you know that you're stalling you know that right now you're here because you feel like you want to have a regular college experience before going away to medical school but then i really started to th weigh my options you know while i'm here yes i'm gaining experiences i'm meeting people um getting that real college experience that i've always wanted in a city that i've always wanted to live in um am i really ready to leave i went back to my old high school spoke to that same bio teacher and he gassed me up he's like you can go it's not too late you can always switch and you can go to SGU everything will be fine and my parents were also really supportive about me wanting to make that transition after I had already been in California for a year so with everyone being so supportive well the most the most important people in my life being supportive about it I felt like I can do it you know I can go to SGU I can start this new journey but the next thing that <laughs> almost stopped me from going was when I started to look at what it would really cost. So I went back to California for my first semester of sophomore year. Um, and during that year, during that semester, I was going to now apply to SGU because I had already been enrolled in Cal State Long Beach. I wasn't just gonna pull out during the summer and wait to see what happens with SGU because I had to go through the interviewing process and all that. So I said, I would just go back to Cali and um, apply to SGU during that time and see what happens. So as we were getting, during that semester now, I started looking at all the finances. What does it really cost to go to medical school? You start seeing some crazy, crazy numbers. Mind you, for me, it was going to be an extra year because there was that one year of accelerated pre-med and then you have your four years of medicine, two years of med school on the island and then another two years in the US, UK, wherever you decide to do clinicals. So when I saw what it would cost, I was like, mm -mm. I was like, nope. I don't think this is possible for me. This is so expensive. Who's going to pay for this? I'm not eligible for financial aid. Do I really expect my parents to pay for this? What happens if I go and I fail? Like these were all the thoughts going through my mind and I started to freak out about it and back out. And I was like, no, 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 no. Maybe I should just stay in school and Cali. Think maybe I might not even want to go to med school at the end of all of this. You know, when, when the devil start, tries to throw in little things to distract you, to get you off course so i told my dad about it i'm like dad i don't think i can go to sgu it's too expensive have you seen what it costs and he immediately was like absolutely not you need to still apply it don't worry about the finances we have never gone based off of what we have in our bank we always move on faith and that's the truth Back home in Kenya, I went to a really expensive high school, but it wasn't because my parents are so rich, they have all this money, or we're so well off and all that stuff. No, everything that I've seen my parents do for myself and my brother has been based on faith. I remember even when I was going to Brookhouse, Brookhouse was the high school I went to in Kenya. And for those of you who know Brookhouse, Brookhouse is a very expensive high school. 
initially when I was going, when I was transitioning from my previous school to Brookhouse, I was going there because the swim coach wanted my brother and I to swim for the school. So they said they would give us an interview and if, if the headmaster liked what he saw and heard, he was going to potentially give us a scholarship so that we could afford going to school there. So we went, we met with the headmaster, everything went smoothly and initially he was like oh we'll only be able to give you like maybe a 10 percent to 30 percent scholarship um one for you one for your brother and even then looking at the fees of what that school cost i was just like um am i really going to be going here i never i it wasn't a thing in my mind where i was like okay yeah this is a shoe and i'm absolutely going to be going to brookhouse no i thought I always knew Brookhouse was an expensive school I thought I was gonna be so lucky to be there so for me I didn't even have my hopes up at the time but when we got that call eventually from Brookhouse after doing our interview and they said that they wanted us and they were offering a 50% scholarship that you know like just like i said initially they were only offering 10 to 30 percent they were like no we're gonna give you guys 50 percent scholarship each and even before we went on our first day my parents had told me you guys need to remember when you're going to this school you're not rich kids you're not like a lot of the kids that you're gonna be in classes with like we don't have money like that just know that you are here by god's grace and he's the one who's gonna carry us through we are literally stepping out on faith because we don't have the money for this school like your scholarship is gonna carry us through but god is also going to provide because if we look in our bank accounts now we don't know how we're doing this for you um so even when it came to applying for sgu it was that same energy we don't see the money in the bank accounts but we know God is gonna provide. And all through high school, God provided. God provided, there was never an issue with me not being able to make it to the end of a, of a term in high school. I was able to go through without issues. Um, I even got an increased scholarship because of my academics and because of the achievements that I had made in swimming while I was there. And so looking at what God had already done for me, I had that confidence to know you know what these numbers that i'm seeing because when you're talking high school and you're talking med school the gap is big financially the gap is huge i don't need to tell you guys that you all, you all know that going to medical school is expensive and furthermore going to a caribbean medical school like sgu is even more expensive so when i was going there when i was making the decision to apply to go there i was really we were really as a family just stepping out on faith trusting that god was going to provide the finances to make this all a possibility thankfully god also did the same thing for me in sgu in terms of just providing for me every single term that came just making sure the finances were there um allowing my mom to be in contact with the right people so that if we needed a little bit of an extension or a little bit of a payment plan they were able to figure that out for us because i'm kenyan i don't qualify for financial aid so there's no assistance there's no loans nothing but after my year of pre-med i had done so well during my last semester of pre-med and i had actually applied for a scholarship and Thankfully to God, I got a really great scholarship which took off $20,000 each year for the four years. The only thing was that as long as I stayed um, and made it through each term and, you know, kept up the grades, it was going to keep rolling over into each next year. So God really came through for me with that. Even the way that I got that scholarship, I didn't apply for that scholarship. I had initially applied for a different scholarship and they initially turned me down for that scholarship but they said but you know what you'd be good for this other scholarship and then that's how i got it but like you all know everybody has an opinion when you when you tell them you want to go to medical school or you want to do something that is scary with your life people are gonna tell you you're crazy you know you're thinking too far ahead who do you think you are all this stuff the funny thing about human beings is when they 
well not everyone but when certain people feel like they can't do something themselves they then decide to project their feelings or their insecurities on you when i had finally decided to tell people i was moving from school in cali to medical school i had heard it all oh you're too young you're only 19 um have you even you haven't even finished undergrad like oh you're gonna go to med school now that doesn't make sense how you gonna how you gonna stick it out like are you even prepared do you even have the prerequisites oh the fail rate is so high oh my gosh have you seen how much these people have to study every single day sgu is known for having such a high fail rate. like i just kept hearing all these negative things all these reasons as to why people think that i'm making a bad decision for myself i will never understand why people mm, feel the need to tell you about yourself like i know myself you know what i mean like people are always going to try to tell you what they think you're capable of what your limits are but you always have to remember that human beings do not validate you human beings are faulty we're all faulty in the way that we think we're faulty in the way that we understand things because we're not god we're not god so we don't know so why would you trust a human being's opinion of you you know what i mean so for me at that point i was just kind of like blocking it out blocking it out because i knew you know what if god is opening this door he's clearly telling me i'm ready and if he's telling me i'm ready he's gonna be with me all this way do i know what i'm doing do i know where this is leading me absolutely not but i have hopes that he's going to see me all the way through to the end because the good lord that starts a work in me is gonna finish it and is gonna see it all the way to completion you know it's all about his plan in the end and that's really the approach you have to have with life you can't be so concerned about what people think because people will project their own fears and insecurities on you especially when you're talking about big dreams big goals that you have in life goals that are scary your dreams should scare you they should make you want to step out but you should also be afraid when you're doing that because you know that whenever you have something big that you're looking towards it's never gonna come out of your own strength you should be afraid because you know on your own you can't do it but you know that with god it is possible long story short just do not let the opinions of others hold you back from experiencing the amazing blessings that you have coming your way or from experiencing what it is or from doing the thing that has always been on your mind and in your heart that god has told you this is for you i promise i will be with you never let fear keep you from doing the thing that really sets your heart on fire there's a reason that god put that desire on your heart so don't ignore it don't let fear be the reason that you don't see who you can be in this life and in this world the other thing with making a transition like you know moving from undergrad to medical school was i'm leaving a fee i'm i'm leaving this life that i've already known that i've already sacrificed for that i've already taken time out of myself to you know build for something that i completely do not know i've never been to grenada before i knew someone who had been to sgu but i had never spoken to her about you know the specifics of what goes on there what is it like to be in medical school i had just known people in passing that had gone to medical school but i never actually sat down and had an in-depth conversation with someone who had been through the process and just heard firsthand what their experience was like so for me there was this fear of oh my gosh like it's already taken me a while to get comfortable here in california and i'm going to now approach everything and go somewhere else and start all over again um because for me when i moved to cali i had a great time in cali but at the same time i left home at 18 most of the people that i went to high school with went to school in the uk and that was the typical thing that people would do from British system schools back home. A lot of them would go to school in the UK. So when they move from Kenya to the UK, they're not really alone because you have alumni 
from your high school and from from other high schools that you played sports with that are around you know someone who's like a train right away so they had like a strong sense of community in the uk for me being in the us i just felt like i was alone um of course i'm in a big school and i'm meeting new people but mind you these are all people who also for me at my school a lot of the people that went there it was a huge school but a lot of the people that went there were from california or were from just a few hours away they could drive home on the weekends you know their family could come see them they had family and friends in the area or not too not too far from where they were and then here is little old me like my home is sees thousands of miles airplanes away you know there's no escaping there's no escaping to go home if i'm feeling homesick there's only phone there's only phone calls <laughs> there's only phone calls and facetime there's no actually at that time skype was the thing <laughs> there was because this is like 2013 there was there was skyping and there was whatsapp and you know but there was no i'm going home for the weekend because i feel sad so it took me a while as much as i had friends and all that like i went through oh my god my homesickness was so bad it was horrible and i never never expected it to be that bad because i had traveled a lot growing up especially because of swimming and you know just I was always up and about traveling here and there but i never went away to boarding school while i lived at home for me the the depression that i think that was that was mm, that was not the first time i'd been depressed in my life that was not the that was definitely not the first time i had been depressed in my life but that was one of the moments when i look back on my life right now i remember being very very depressed I remember being very depressed during my freshman year in California. It was a tough one for me and it took a long time to fight my way out of that. Um, so by the time now I'm talking about leaving, you know, for me, my third semester in Cali was my best semester. That's where I met the friends that I really gelled with. I was having so much fun. I was in an apartment now. I wasn't living in student housing anymore. Like, I just felt like, okay, Cali is home, you know, like Long Beach is home. Like it was really feeling like things were coming together. Um, so to now think that I'm gonna uproot my life and go and start this whole process again, that was scary. But I trusted God and I just said, you know what, if you open up this door and if you're gonna do this, then I'm just going to walk through. And that's exactly what he did. It was just like pulling apart the gates and I was just going through and going through and going through until I found myself in SGU and it was the easiest the smoothest easiest transition finding someone to take up my space um to, to take up my lease because i was sharing it with three other girls was super easy and then dropping out of school they didn't give me too much of a hassle with that it was i just pulled out there was not big issues with my visa and all that stuff um my interview with sgu went very smoothly i interviewed and the next day i knew i was in it was just a very quick 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 transition the only way i can explain it is was the hands of god just in every single phase of my life telling me yep this is it yep this is it yep this is it and that's how i eventually ended up on that flight that took me all the way to the beautiful island of grenada now i'm gonna talk about the fear of failing because getting into medical school is one thing um for those of you who are american and you're gonna take the mcat taking the mcat is one thing then getting doing your interview getting interviews is gonna be another thing and getting into medical school is gonna be another thing but what a lot of people don't talk about is staying in medical school is the other thing it is the big thing getting in you know doing your mcat doing all those things are the the, the checkpoints prior to but staying in is the real is the real task because that's where you're really going to do all the sacrifice you know sacrificing your time sacrificing your comfort sacrificing just a lot 
of yourself to make this dream a reality because they don't make it easy for you once you're in medical school. You're probably used to being the best or one of the best in your class, in your classes, um, getting some of the highest grades and, you know, being that top student. But now you're in an environment where everybody is the top student. Everybody was the best or at least was at the top of their class. So the, the playing field is completely different and you deal with a lot of things but today we're just talking about fear and that fear of failing for me was a huge thing because i knew i'm taking a big gamble coming out here and i'm spending a lot of my parents money being here i cannot fail but fear can be a motivator and it can also be something that cripples you so you have to find that balance because a little bit of fear is good in certain instances because it pushes you, it gets your adrenaline going and it makes you work harder, take things more seriously. But fear becomes detrimental when you're constantly just worried. It's making you anxious. You can't perform at your best. You're doubting God. You have to assess, you know, where is my fear coming from? God doesn't say, I will be with you and so you will not have fear. He knows you're going to be afraid. He knows you're going to be worried. But you have to have that mental toughness, that, that obedience where you can tell your mind, stop fearing, stop worrying, constantly check yourself and re-examine where that fear is coming from. Like I was talking about in my past video, I used to feel in the beginning like I was walking around with a gun to my head, basically like just mess up right now and see what's gonna happen to you because that's what it feels like sometimes when you're in that environment you don't want to miss a day of not studying you don't want to miss a day where you're not investing yourself you're constantly thinking about every second of the day oh what can i do i don't want to fail how can i use my time but you have to get to this place where you're not stressing about the things that are not in your control so for example you cannot control the grade that you get on an exam but you can control the amount of work you put into it you can control your attitude towards it so whereas i can study for an exam and be studying scared like oh my god i already forgot everything i learned oh my god oh my god and then i go to the exam and i'm completely panicked and i and i flunk it versus this content is scary. This is a lot of material. But guess what? God gave me a brain and he also put me in this position so I can do it. And I'm just going to apply myself, plan my time appropriately, um, study as much as I can every day, make sure I'm being consistent. And when the exam comes, I know there's absolutely no way I can remember every single thing that I've learned because it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot but i trust that if i apply myself and if i work hard and if i trust god he's going to carry me through because that's the that's the posture that you have to have towards all of this you have to believe that no matter what he is going to carry you through because even if you fail and it's not about what you want because you can go into something you can want your a's you can want your high grades and all that stuff but you always have to rem remind yourself that all i can do is work hard and whatever it will be is for god's glory and it is it is his plan so you always must remember that god this is what i want but give me peace that surpasses understanding if the outcome is not what i want because at the end of the day there is a reason for every little thing that he's going to do in your life and you just have to see it as that the only thing you can control is your attitude towards things is your posture towards things and if you have an attitude of gratitude towards god and trust and faith you'll be okay but just remember faith without works is dead you cannot just sit on your bed and lay on your bed and be like mm, god please just give me an a i know you can do it all this work is so hard but i just want an a and then you're spending your whole day laying in bed doing nothing and all your weekends you're turning up with your friends at the club like he's gonna be like it don't work like that baby girl like it doesn't work like that so just remember faith without works is dead yes you're gonna be afraid this applies to anything you do in life that is 
requiring a lot out of you you will be afraid having some degree of fear doesn't mean you're a bad person it doesn't mean you're a bad christian it doesn't mean you don't trust god it just means i gotta control this so that this fear does not overtake my life just to wrap this up remember that fear is a negative emotion that separates us from god's love Fear is a tactic that the devil loves to use to distract us from God's best from our life. It's those little insecurities that he's going to whisper to you in those moments where he already sees you spiraling down a very scary path. You want to make sure you catch yourself when you're spiraling. I used to do this thing where I would I would hear that little whisper. You know how the devil be getting you sometimes? Like, you can be having a good day. You're like, okay, I'm not going to freak out. I'm just going to study my work today. You're studying. You know, you're doing your thing. Then next thing you know, he just whispers to you, mm, you're so dumb. Like, see, you already forgot what you read an hour ago. Next thing you know, you're like, oh my God, I already forgot. Oh my God. Let me go back and see if I remember. Oh my God, I actually forgot. Oh my God next week is my exam i don't know anything oh my god i'm gonna then you're like spiraling 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 and that's how the devil loves to use you he will get you in that loop and he will start spinning you round and round and round and round until he gets you where he wants you and then when you go to the exam what happens you fail because why you are staring at that tree from before you even walked into the exam whatever you stare at whatever you attract whatever you manifest you will pull into your life if you are driving a car and you're like don't hit the tree don't hit the tree don't hit the tree where do you think the car is gonna go right to the tree so if you keep saying oh my god i'm gonna fail oh my god this is so hard oh my god that is exactly where your energy will eventually take you it will flow in that direction so don't let the devil grab you and trick you into feeling like you are unable you are incompetent you have to control your mind god does not make it easy for us he says i will be there for you i will give you grace i will give you mercy i will have your back i love you i am for you but he wants you to do the work if he didn't want you to do the work guess what he would have made us all like basically robots that do exactly what he wants us to do but he gave us freedom of choice and these are the choices that we have to make. We have to choose to trust him even when everything inside us wants to scream and focus on our fear. You have to focus on God. You have to choose light. You have to choose life. And you have to get control of your mind. Trust me, even for me right now in this stage in my life, I have to remind myself of this all the time. I am not perfect. And I know when I'm sitting here and I'm saying all these things, sometimes I have to remind myself. I literally make voice notes to myself to encourage myself. Things that I listen to when I'm going to the hospital at times, just to remind myself that you are okay, God is with you. Whatever it is you have to do, for me, I would write things on, on paper, stick them on my wall, maybe have it as my screensaver, whatever it is that I'm struggling with, I may just write it out. I may make a voice note to myself that I will play every day or I may write it in a journal. Whatever you need to do to pull yourself out of that mindset where you're constantly trapped by your thoughts and your fear, you've got to work on that. You've got to work on that because fear is going to separate you from what God has for you. It's going to keep you from God's best for your life. It is the devil trying to distract you and you have no time for that. You are powerful because you have God beside you. You have God around you. You have his angels protecting you. There is nothing in this life that you cannot do when you trust God and when it is a part of his plan and a part of his purpose. So you just focus on figuring out what that is and trust that God can really bring it to pass. So <laughs> that's all I have for you guys today. This was on fear. I hope that this was helpful for someone and I look forward to chatting with you guys about it. You know, as usual, DM me on Instagram. 
leave comments here wherever you want and if you're new here thank you subscribe to me i guess now i should start saying that because i'm a youtuber <laughs> subscribe to me guys i love you all praying for you wishing you all the best and bye